Holy For your name is great And greatly to be praised We bring glory to your name Father, in the name of your Son, we thank you for the Word. We thank you for the worship. Father, we thank you for the prayers. We thank you for the moving of your Holy Spirit. We just thank you for you being who you are in our lives. We thank you for life, for health, for strength. For shalom, peace. We thank you, Father, for you being Elohim, God in our lives. We thank you, Father, that all of your promises are yes, and not one of them are no. And I thank you, Father, for helping us understand you and the workings of how you work and operate in this earth rim and father and we let you work through us to manifest the fullness of who you are in our lives by allowing sin to be less in our lives and so we thank you for this in Yahshua's name I mean, as I was listening to all the different songs, you know, what he did for us yesterday, he'll do, and that, that hit me very good because without a doubt what he did yesterday, he'll do it again today. And I love worship. And I love worshiping him. Even before, as you know, I've said it so many times before I got saved, I, I love love songs and I love uh, slow songs. And I love to love my father in heaven and sing love to him. And in the true sense and the pure sense and the spiritual sense of making love to my father in heaven in and through the realm of the Holy Spirit. And it's a very intimate place. And boy, I know when I say it, it's hard to even comprehend it, but it's better than any physical sex or anything else that you have once you really get a real experience with them. There's nothing that can compare to it, nothing. And it's far deeper than something physical 
But I pray that we come to experience him in that way so we can know without a doubt. Because you can get to a place where you know that 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 you know like you never knew that there really is a God that's in heaven. And that we really do have an intimate, real relationship with him. And you can know that better than you know the, the color of the skin on your body or the gender in which you are or the place in which you live. You can know him greater than any physical thing on this earth. And I pray that we come to know him. As Paul say, to know him in the fellowship of his service and in the power of his resurrection because we're going to get to experience that either way but if we experience it experience it his way process it his way because life and death impacts all of us and so on my mind and on my heart and as I'm thinking in terms of the things that we've been talking and regarding, governing and dealing with the, the tree of the knowledge of both good and evil. And, and as I've talked about in the past in regard to this truth, that why, you know, sometimes it seems like God's word is not true. And then we get very disappointed because we don't see it manifest in our lives, not understanding that there's something that's on our end that wasn't done and not on his end because every promise that comes from him is yes. But why we don't reap? You know, as it on my mind and dealing with this thing of the, the tree of knowledge, both good and evil, you know, and, and being exposed to knowing both good and evil, then the question always comes to why do good people die young? And, and it goes on and on, the list goes on and on. Why babies die? Why young people die? Why people die before they seem like they reach reached their full potential? There's just so many answers as people sins. And I don't know the answers to people specific because those are specific things. Even when two things happen the same way, the reason why it happened are different. But the Almighty allows us at times to see behind the veil. Say behind the veil. He let us see behind the veil. And if you're trying to understand what I'm referring to behind the veil is that if you're thinking of the tabernacle and as you come from the outer court and then you go uh, into the inner court and then in the outer court there's the brazen labor and the brazen altar and then you go inside there's the seven golden candlesticks and there's the table showbread and then there's the altar of incense and then there's a thick veil that you go behind in which there's the all ark of the covenant or the ark of his presence and you go through that veil and there are things behind there the presence of the almighty that you get to experience in ways that you can't when you're in the outer court or even in the holy place there's something special behind that veil that, and it's so special that only the high priest or whoever the Almighty calls to come behind that veil can come and anybody come behind that veil when they're not required or spoken to or told to come behind, it can cost them their life. I've had the experience to see and know things that are behind that veil and it helps me understand why things happen. And no, I don't know, understand why everything happened. I just know about the things that I required and I asked of and I asked for answers on and he gave me those answers and why. And then he even allowed me to see behind the veil that because every year on the Day of Atonement, Yeshua the Messiah behind the veil are doing things and making judgments. And even Satan has access to come and participate. As we see in the book of Job. Which is a picture of what happens behind the veil on the day of atonement.
And as we saw in the book of Job, there's some things that Job just didn't understand what was happening. His wife didn't understand what happened. His friends didn't understand what happened. And you and I wouldn't understood if it wasn't written so we could know what was happening. Why I, I say that and why that comes to my mind, I, I think in terms of, uh, we have one of the members that's, uh, when we reverse it, we call them, when they're young, we call them old. And so they're old and in need of a surgery and to get a pacemaker for the heart, under 40 years old. When think of one of our pastors that's, uh, uh, we got news in terms of no brain activity because they had a, a stroke and, and, uh, and for the most part they're saying they're just gone and there has to be a decision whether to let them go or not. And they're very young, they're under 60 years old. And you, 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 you try to figure out why, and you try to understand why, and especially a wife and got two still underage children. And it makes you figure out why. And I know the wife would like to know, because she's in pain right now. She's hurting. And if you was in that situation, you'd be hurting too. And as I told her, I pray that the Almighty help you see behind the veil so you can know what's going on. Not that it will ease your pain, but it help you understand some of the why. So you can be at peace. Because sometimes we need to understand some things. Because sometimes our mates don't tell us everything because they're trying to hide things, because they're trying to protect us. And they know things that you don't know. Let me, let me say it this way. Sometimes they get tired and they're ready to go, but they won't tell you. Because you want them to live, so they'll say what you want to be, what you want to hear. But inside, they're already tired and they're ready to go. I understand because I've been in that, that position with Almighty let me know they're ready to go. And I've been in that position where some of them have been very honest with me and say, hey, I'm ready to go, but I just say what they want to hear because they don't want to hear the truth. I'm ready to go. Are you listening to me? Because I want you to understand something. If you don't understand anything else, I'll need you to understand this. When it comes to death, we have a say-so. We have far more say about us dying than we ever understood. But if you just go through the scriptures, you begin to see something. Even when it came to Yeshua the Messiah, he said, and he gave the ghosts up. And then Abraham gave, and all of them, he gave the ghosts. Because if you don't give it up, you'll still hang around. You have to willingly let it go. And sometimes life wears you down until you're so tired, until you just give it up. And you give up the ghosts. But as long as you have a will to live, you will keep living until you get tired. So you, you trying to tell me? Listen. Somebody start thinking, are you trying to tell me that if I choose and will to live, that I am going to keep living? No, because you're going to die, believe me. As long as the curse of sin is in the earth, you are going to physically die. But you do have a choice when you want to go. And you can fight as long as you can, but at some point you're going to check out. Whether you're young or you're old, don't matter what age you are, sin impacts everybody. Death strikes every human. And I'm, I'm not just saying it because we have so many people who, who, who watch and so many of our congregations that watch and listen and, 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 and want to help them. And then we had uh, those that uh, deem themselves members but too far away to get here. And so 
we greet them and we love on them because life happens to everybody y'all I've been near death more than three times and I can tell you it is so easy just to give the ghosts up and you're gone the only thing that allowed me to still be alive is that I choose to keep living because as I look at life I said my purpose is not up but when it's up I'm not listen it don't matter what age I leave, just as long as I fulfill my purpose. That I need to fulfill before I leave here. Purpose. Look at somebody say purpose. And you need to fulfill purpose before you leave here because there's so many people who have lived and died without fulfilling purpose. And some people have that purpose kind of early and some people don't. Yahshua fulfilled his purpose and he left here. Well, he, technically, we know he hasn't left because he resurrected. But he, the physical realm he left at 33, he fulfilled his purpose. Others at different ages, they fulfill their purpose. But if we choose, we can proclaim with long life. Will he satisfy us and provide us with Deliverance, salvation, healing, preservation, because he needs to preserve. And all of us that's over 60, you know without a doubt, your body needs to be preserved. And we need a little, not just a little preservation, we need a little renewing. <laughs> a little rejuvenating. Why? Because the curse of sin is trying to take us down a path that we don't want to go. All of us, that's, you know, you know that's, that's up in age, guess what? We, if we had a choice, we wouldn't want to age. Who in here would just, just, you just, you just want to age? I don't mind being 100, but look at my best. <laughs> I don't mind being 600, but still look my best. Whatever my best years are in my best stage in life where I look my best, that's what I want to look. If that best is at 20 or that best is at 60, just whatever the best is. Amen. Hello, y'all. But I will tell you this. Being that we're talking about biting of this tree, now it's both good and evil that a lot of people don't understand. Sometimes, and I especially have seen this with moms who are raising a lot of kids by themselves and without the assistance of a husband, a man, and they wear themselves down until they wear themselves to an early grade. But I've seen it also with men. And because there's, there are more bad men than good men, until people pull on the good man and wear him down until he end up checking out early. And we got a lot of, I, could, I think the creator, the Almighty has blessed us with good men here at Covenant. Amen. Not perfect men, but good men. You know, I know that somebody, you know, come to their mind and they say, there ain't none good but God. But keep reading your Bible and talk about good men too. <laughs> because the goodness that we produce it come from him and one thing when there's less of something there's more demand for it and I, I've, I've seen that and sometimes that's what do it because I, I know I got so tired not because of any ailment or sickness just, be, just because of just keep being there for so many people, carrying so much, taking on so much responsibility, only because of so many no good men not being around and in the lives of their children and things of that nature. And I can say without a doubt that I wasn't permitted to be in the lives of some of my kids, two of them. And they hurt and they bleed. 
And they, they, they don't always know how to express that bleeding that they have. Even though I didn't desire, didn't create, and always wanted to be there. But they still bleed, they hurt. But because I knew I wasn't in their life, I tried to make sure I was in somebody else's. Because if I was permitted, I would have been there the whole time and never left. So, Father, as I plant the seed being in somebody else's life, allow somebody to be in their life. Are you listening? How many times you've been so tired that you're ready to check out and there was no ailment, no sickness? You were just tired, exhausted from within. And nobody understood how tired you were and how exhausted you were. And even when you try to tell them, they couldn't see it because you, you're functioning so well and you, you're talking so well and you so, they don't have a clue how exhausted you are inside. And this is why some people leave early. Because they're just tired. And when you keep taking on so much until eventually it, 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 the real problem is not a sickness. The real problem is the exhaustion. But now it has to show up in some kind of physical way when its root is still in the fact that you just need freedom from all the responsibilities that you've been carrying for so long. And I know we have some good brothers here, and I know that they carry a lot of responsibility. I know we got something that need to grow and mature too, so, uh, but it don't mean that they're not good guys. Don't mean that they're not trying to do right. They just need to mature more. But then we got something that to carry a lot of responsibility. And we got some women, and my wife was one who carrying a lot of responsibility. Her mom, this, that, the other, before she passed, until it eventually it started affecting her health. But she was determined that she ain't going to let up. That she want to hang in there and take care of this responsibility that she ill-equipped for. Take care of it all the way to the end. Not understanding that when you take and allow others to help you, whether it's through the nursing home or whether it's through, you're still responsible and you still can be there every single day. You're just not carrying the load all by yourself no more. And statistically, you know what they tell us, and I, I bring it up all the time, because I had to live with it. And, you know, had a father, a mother, her aunt, carrying that responsibility all the way until they left. Do you know that statistically, that 70 plus percent of all caregivers end up leaving, checking out of here before the one that they take care of? Because of the intensity of it, what it does to you, you have to give yourself breaks. As much as you want to be there every moment, every and you feel like nobody can take care of him like you. But if you're in the grave, nobody still can't take care of him like you. You have to give yourself breaks. These are the things behind the scenes that sometimes you can't see that's causing things that take place and happen. There's so many little things behind the scene, behind the veil that you don't know about. And then we make false perceptions and process things falsely, wrongly, because we don't have all the information. And that's why people cease to believe in God, things of nature, only because they don't have enough information because they don't know God enough to even understand. Number one, God ain't the author of sickness and disease. God ain't took your mama, your grandmama. He ain't take your baby. He didn't take, because he, there's no death in God. That's the first thing they need to understand. So he's not the author of death. 
But since he's all powerful, because we tell him he's all powerful, and we tell that we tell everybody how all powerful God is, and he can do anything, and he can. But we keep failing to tell people he only can do what we allow him to do, and if we don't allow him, he can't. Because well, Holly, there's not that many times we preach a message what God can't do, but God can't do some stuff. He can't intervene in your life if you don't allow him. As much as he loves you, he can't heal you if you won't have faith in him. If you won't trust him. We don't talk about the stuff he can't do. Because that's a lot that God can't do when your will gets in the way. But I will tell you this. If we keep sin out of our lives, number one, we'd be more prosperous and our marriages would be more healthy and everything else about our life be healthy. But we also would live longer. Because if sin never came into exist, we would never have poverty, sickness, disease, and any of this stuff operating in the earth room. All of these things operate only because of sin and Satan. That's the only reason. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to believe it. But it's still true. But I can tell you this, even though I've screwed up and I've sinned and I've violated my body so many times I can't count it, but I do know how to repent. I do know how to get back in right relationship with God and ask him to forgive and I do know how to correct myself and back off because sometimes you get addicted to working. Why? Because of the very thing that I said about my wife, I found myself, nobody else do it, so you got to do it. I remember the times that I would do 30, 35 different things, carrying all 35 things, maintaining all 35 things at one time. Why? Because there no other people would jump in and pitch in and help. And eventually it start taking your health because you're violating the law of health. Because if you don't do it, nobody won't do it. And you're right, nobody won't. But we do have to pray and trust God that somebody rise up and they'll do it. Moms, grandmoms, daddies, granddaddies, sometimes you got to look at life. And, and here's one thing I do. I remember it was hard for me to go away and fully enjoy myself away from ministry because was attached to everything because the lack of help that was just so terrible for so long thank the almighty for the great help i got today we are the man i got to get almighty for that we need more now we need more but i thank god for the great help i got today man i thank god for the great help i had yesterday you know like deaconess and sister romaine and things man without a doubt they were great help you know and uh, they were great members. And they loved their pastor. And I loved them. And they made life easy for me because they cared about me, the person. Not just me, the pastor, but me, the person. And I greatly appreciate that so tremendously. And yes, in so many ways, I missed it because you need people who just love you for being you. And I just love you because you Dr. Webb, Pastor Webb, Apostle Webb, Bishop Webb. You know, because you, you this, that, the other, because you got money or you don't have money. Because you do for them or you won't do for them. They just care about you. Man, that's special. Now, that's enough to put you in tears right there alone. When some people just love you just for you. Man. And, 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 and care and love you. Sometimes way better than family. Way better than even the close family. Man, it's special. It's really special. I can't begin to tell you. You actually didn't have to stop. That was, that was just, that's good and soothing in the background. You know.
I just want to give us some, our minds to grasp some things. Because I just want, to, just want to talk. And, 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 you know, well, you know, I just talk anyhow. But I don't want to, you know, be like preaching. And, you know, most of the time I don't preach anyhow. So, so I'm just, I mainly just talk. But it's like, you know, you know, daddy talking to his children and just, just trying to impart some wisdom to those that are watching. Try to get some understanding. No, just don't bring understanding to everything because nobody can give you understanding about everything. And you ain't going to get all that understanding until you get in the face of the creator for yourself. Because the Bible makes it clear the secret things belong unto him. But the things that are revealed belong to us and our children. And here's the good news. He's revealing some things. And I seek him for some answers. And he revealed things. And I thank him for those answers. Now I, I know. When I think in terms of my granddaughter. 20 years old. Being shy. The Almighty warns me. More than a week ahead of time. Let me know what is going to happen before it happens. No, it don't stop the pain, but you understand. Because he allowed you to see behind the veil, and he's warned me ahead of time and said, here's what's going to, but you stay out the way. Because this is what I'm doing, and this is why I'm doing it. That helps you have some sanity. Because I'm a person, I like to understand why. Uh, you know, like that kid always say, why, 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 why? 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 I'm that kid with God. I want to know why. And so, with me, there's nothing major that goes on that happens in my life that God don't talk to me about. It. Just like he went and talked to Abraham, because Abraham was a friend. I'm a friend. And he come talks to me and say, hey, I need to let my friend know why this is going to happen. Before it happened. Just like he told Abraham before it happened. He told me before it happened. Two of my own kids before they died. He told me before it happened what happened. But that I could do something. He didn't say okay stay out of it. He said okay I can do something. So I, and then stop to him from dying. Same thing he did with other members. For 21 years pastoring this congregation. 21 years. Plus. Not one member of this congregation ever died. You know why? I stayed in my face before God and stopped. And I can't count how many should have died. Because there's a lot of them. And then it got to the place I was tired. I became exhausted inside. And I spoke to us, the congregation. I said to you, I said, look, I am exhausted. I'm tired. I'm telling you, y'all on your own now. Because if you don't know how to pray for yourself, folk going to die. Because almost every year, somebody's supposed to be dead. It's a lot of responsibility to carry people spiritually. And they can't appreciate because they don't even know you're carrying them. They don't know you're carrying them financially. They don't even know, I'm talking about on the spiritual side. And then sometimes they actually be physically carrying people financially. I done done both. Along with so many other particular things and, and, and to get, the deep, get to the deep rooted issues inside of them, the things that threw them off track as a kid and all that, it takes a lot to pray and, and get answers to. Because sometimes they don't know the answers themselves. Sometimes they know what happened to them, but they don't know why it happened and they can't get to the root. What's controlling them? Because listen to me. It's not what happens to you to do damage. It's how you process what happened. And sometimes when you're a kid, you don't know how you process it. I don't know how I processed death when I was a kid. I know it messed me up, but I didn't even realize I had processed it. And I became messed up as a pastor, struggling, dealing with death, dealing with funerals, love people, but can't do a funeral. Because of something happened to me in my childhood processed it wrong and you struggle and if God don't reveal the root to you you'll never get that thing because Satan don't want you to know the root he wants to maintain control through your ignorance 
Listen to what the Bible says. My people what? Destroyed because of what? Let's change that word lack of knowledge and just say ignorance. My people destroyed because of ignorance, which is a lack of knowledge. And then here's the worst part right here. You know what the worst part is? In that same verse it said, and they reject knowledge. Talking about his people. Men, it comes to them and they reject it. And you know what's even worse than that? It's the next part of that same verse. Because they reject me, I reject their children. Now your children are suffering behind stuff you did. That's what I don't want. I don't want my kids suffering behind things I did. Now some stuff I couldn't stop because I had no control over it. It wasn't, it wasn't, that wasn't my choice. But what is my choice? I don't want them to suffer behind things I chose. So there's a lot of stuff behind the veil, uh, things that are unseen, that your minds do not comprehend that causes so much stuff that goes on. This is why that book, God's Psychology, is so important so it can deal with the root issues of our life to free us from the power and the grip of sin so we can walk in the fullness of the promises that he's provided for us. Are y'all listening? Do you know your life could be better? The only thing stopping it is your own wrong thinking called sin. Your marriage could be better if you could change your thinking. Your finances could be better. Your shalom, your peace can be better. All we know is what is going on, but we don't get to the root, the why. And sometimes get to the root why. You can't ask why one time. You got to ask why. Because once you ask why and get an answer now, you got to say why again. And then you get an answer, you got to say why again to get root. So you get further, further down to get to that root. So you can have a clear understanding. And when you understand that your life belongs to him and that he is in absolute control of your life because you submitted to him, that nothing happens in your life without him knowing what's going on, then it allows you to know one thing, y'all. Listen, to have confidence and peace because you know you're in his hands and he's not going to allow anything to happen to you that he won't take and work it for your good. All right. I said that. Now I kind of like want to just do a little shift to a little altar call time thing. You know, all, you know, grandmas and, and granddads, and you know, I want y'all to think about something. Think about this, and and, and and I want you to think about this. Words are so powerful. Until at death, so many within the Bible spoke blessings on their children, that impacted them long after they were dead impacted the children okay so I want you to think about this for a moment what do you want best for your children I want you to think about that brother Greg Greg senior think about it what do you want for your children and then you think about it and then you ask God for the right words so you can release the blessing on each and every one of those children and where the direction that the creator want for their life you and I'll guarantee you this, when you say it in absolute faith, he will honor those words even when you're in the grave. To see it to it, that it keep moving on your kids to make sure that those things happen that you said to happen over their life. Over their grandchildren. Over your nieces and your nephews. Because of the power of his word in your mouth. That's why the first thing.
dealing with my daughter first thing, I want people, to, I mean my granddaughter, I want people to understand, number one, God was not the author of taking her life. God had ain't nothing to do with that. But number two, since death did take place, I'm trusting he's going to take her death and work it together for good. I'm trusting that it will convict my nieces, my nephews, my other grandkids, and my children to understand, guess what? Death can strike you no matter what age you are. And so if you, you don't know tomorrow, you could be gone. So that's why you want to receive and accept him and live for him today. Because tomorrow is not promised to you. You want to receive him today. Listen to me. Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. The only reason I know that I'll be tomorrow because he told me something about tomorrow. And if he told me something about tomorrow, I'm going to know I'm going to be in that tomorrow because he's going to fulfill his word. Other than that, I don't know. That's why I have to live my best life today. And live it as best as possible today. So parents and grandparents, I want you to think about where the direction that you sense God has for your children and you release it and speak it on them. So your words can govern their life more than anything because your faith is in what you said about them because you know it came from the creator and you know without a doubt he'll fulfill his word because you're speaking only his words over them. Do you know whether you're going to live to see tomorrow or not? That's why you need to make a decision about your creator today. The Bible says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Old people, literally old people, which is the young people. It ain't how long you've been living for him. Because what you did yesterday, that's over. But what are you doing for him today? We talk about what we used to do. Come on, there's stuff you still can do today. You said we won souls yesterday. You can still win souls today. You, you can do that through phone. You can do it through so many different methods. Just let him guide and direct. Because we do need to win souls. If we don't start winning souls, then we can easily lose this nation and no longer see it under the influence of the hand of God. There's no such thing going to be a perfect nation, but you can have a nation that honors God. And things that have turned, they can reverse themselves and turn back if we start impacting people for the good of the kingdom. And why not start with our own children and our own grandchildren and our own nieces and our own nephews and great nieces and great nephews and so forth and so on. Let us make those impacts today. Let's make the impact today. So, on that note, I thank you all that's watching. My time is up, and I thank you for yours. Amen. Let's thank God for that word. It was short. It was sweet. It was to the point. And I pray that we uh, don't take it for granted. Um, I don't. I don't think we understand that we are witnessing such a great thing right in the front of us. Breaking barriers, breaking breaking the, the status quo. It's not too often you, you hear leaders come up and talk about their, their flaws. That's not a popular thing in our society. Amen? Y'all a, a little quiet. 
You know, I, I was talking about this a little bit last night. Um, and, and I do believe, like Dr. Webb said, is we never know when our, our, our last time is going to be here. Um, you know, some people, I had an argument with somebody, not I say an argument, I had a conversation, but some people believe, they really believe that you have to die of something. They don't believe that you, you can just give up the ghost as he was talking about. They believe that, well, organ failed or you know, this failed or, you know, no. But sometimes you can wear yourself out. The Bible talks about this is in the last days the enemy desires to wear out the saints. You know, one thing that Dr. Webb has been very uh, transparent about, one thing he's been very adamant about, and one thing, I, I believe it was a gift from God. And he talks about how, how many of y'all know that obedience to Yahweh is the beginning of everything for you? Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, he said he had got one of his greatest offerings. And, you know, anybody ever got one of those big checks? We all kind of remember our biggest check, don't we? We just looked at it for a minute before we even did anything. We just looked at it. Oh, man, look at that. So he got one of his biggest offerings, and, and the Almighty told him to give it. Now, keep in mind, there's still a lot of work to be done here. You know, just because somebody say something don't mean you got to do it. But he obeyed. He hearkened to the voice of the Lord. He obeyed. He sowed that seed that God told him to give. And because he was obedient, Yahweh blessed him with timeshare and ever since he's been taking those timeshares he has been telling us and and we watch him it is very important for us to take a break come on can we say that together it is very important well let me let me, let me make this disclaimer when you work hard because <laughs> some of us like to take breaks from doing nothing but when you work hard, when you work diligently, when you are fulfilling purpose, it is very important for you to take a break. You know, I was talking about this last night. It's so funny how in this society we live in, we all have, we all have these for you two people. We all have these. We all have cell phones. And if that thing hit 50%, some people look like crackheads. Hey, what kind, what kind of phone you got? Am I lying? What kind of fun? Because we don't want this thing to run out. We don't want this charge to die out. But if we can put so much focus on, some of us, we run around on 15%. If we had meters, some of us would be blinking. Because we walk around on 15%. But we won't let this thing die. Isn't that bad? We would be walking around blinking because we just need a charge. And there's no shortcut. There's no cheat code. Sometimes there's no replacement for sleep. <laughs> Sometimes you need to break away, as they say, unplug from the matrix. Get away. That's why I love Yeshua. He went up into the, to the mountains got away from everybody you know how we say everybody we don't pronounce not one syllable on everybody get away from everybody and you gotta go take a break and hear from the almighty because the truth is we can wear ourselves out and, and, and the truth is if we allow ourselves to wear out because like I said we can make a good thing a God thing see because God is not going to lead you to, to, to work yourself to death the scripture says he came to give you life and life more abundantly. I'm going to say one more thing. Because I remember, I remember as a kid, I used to always ask Dr. Webb this. And it just didn't ever make sense. I'm like, I'm like, I don't get it. I, I used to read the story of Jacob and Esau. And, and, and this, is just, this is just to reiterate how powerful, how powerful words are. I was like, I'm reading the story, you know, and, 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 and Jacob tricked Esau. He gave him the suit. And then he go in there and he say that, uh, that, that, that Isaac gave him the birthright. I'm like, what's the birthright? You know, it's like it just it kind of the story lead up to something so big. And then in, when it get to the plot or to the, to, the, to the bang, it's like it just, and he gave him the birthright. I'm like, well, what, what's the birthright? 
And Dr. Webb would try to explain to me, well, he spoke a blessing over him. I'm like, so what? He could just speak another blessing. But we have to understand that God's order, the scripture says that, that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And we don't realize that we speak so much death. Scripture says we're going to be judged by every word. Do we realize the words that we are speaking? Do we realize what we are really saying? That's why Yahweh wants us to speak what his word says. Dr. Webb just made it very clear. We overlooked that. You know, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. See, see, we can think that, we can hear that and think it's, a, it's, an, it's an excuse or a reason. No, no. The second part says, because they have rejected knowledge. You, we talking about you. He talking about me. We have rejected knowledge. Please don't be one of those people. I've been doing it this way. My mother did it this way. Her mother did it this way. And I'm going to die doing it that way. We heard people say that stuff before. We might have said it before. And the truth is, you're going to die. Doing that that way. But you can choose life. Don't miss such a small thing that he's saying today. Now, let me, let me add to this. Thank you, Dr. Webb. We, we, I, I really appreciate his openness. We got money for chips and dip. Because some of y'all like dip too. We got money for soda. We got money for some clothes that we never going to wear. We got money for all these things. We got money to go eat. Now, I, you know, we like to eat. We like to eat good. We will, drive, we will drive a few miles to go to a certain place to get a certain plate so we can feel a certain way. But when it comes time to vacation, oh, uh, not this year. I ain't got it. I can't afford it. Just like we say, death and life is in the power of the tongue. The truth is, you can afford it. The truth is, you mismanage your resources. So when things that are important come about, you don't have the resources available because you did not see the importance of putting those resources aside so that you can take a vacation. We will go bum, beg, and borrow to get money for a charger for a phone that's going to be outdated in two months. But we don't take the same uh, 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 importance. We don't take the same tenacity. We don't take the same uh, 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 urgency when it comes time to get a break. I'm telling you, a break can change your life. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever been, I mean, one thing Dr. Webb said, he, he's not lying. We in here, I, I look around, I see my brethren, you know, starting from Deacon Gordon. This man works. You can say a lot of things about him, but one thing you can't say is that this man don't work. He gonna work. Brother Jerry. He works. You know, he go, you see him out there, he rubbing that mustache, he work. What we got here? Oh, oh, you, you get some tools that he just, he start, he light up. He works. Brother Tim, he work with kids, so you know he work. Y'all like, yeah, I'm going to pray for you, brother. Oh, yeah, give him the strength, Lord. But he works. He leave work to do what? To go to work. To come home. <laughs> to work. Brother Doug. Works. He leave work to go to work. Amen. I don't know. I think that just be, that's, that's just the motto here in Covenant. He leave work to go to work. To make work. To find work. So he can work. <laughs> and I'm so proud of this brother right here. Because I couldn't always say this, but Brother Gregory, he go to work. Hold up, I think I want to say that one more time. If he did it before when we were singing earlier, he can do it again. Same God right now, same God back then. 
this brother gets up and goes to work, he going to find work. He going to do work. And he looking for more work so he can work. So he can work on being a better worker. You know, it's days, and I thank God every day. I wake up about 7 o'clock. Well, no, no. I wake up about 6, 630. I wake up. I leave at 7. I go to work. I leave work to go to work. And I leave that work to come home so I can recharge, just like we recharge these phones, so I can get up and do what? Go to work again. And this is the beautiful thing. We're not just talking about physical work, but we work on doing the word. That's work. Yeah. Obeying the word is work. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you like this. The enemy knows that if you're tired and you're, and you're wore out, guess what? You are vulnerable. You're vulnerable to sin and you're vulnerable to death. And we know that those two go together. The wages of sin is death. So it's important that we recharge. That we plug into the word. And be rejuvenated. And don't th don't think the word alone. Because you, you, you can read all the scriptures you want. But you still need to get some rest. You still need to eat. Right. And not that sugar. Right. I don't know why we're going all the way over here, but God loves us. He wants us to have life and life to the fullest. Right. And ladies, let's learn from this. If you have a good man and he works hard, please take care of him. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to say it one more time because we don't want to be crying and, and, and boo-hooing and all this when we, we could have made a difference. Yeah. Let's learn. If you, got a good, if you got a good man, and I, I see Deacon Gordon want to give his wife credit. We know Sister Chris take care of her man. All six, eight of them. How, how, how tall is it? Six, five? Oh, I gave you a couple inches. That's all right. You know how we do. Six, all six, eight of them. <laughs> But if you got a good man, come on, ladies, if you got a good man, you take care of him. You make sure he gets some rest. You make sure when he come home, he come to a house of love. That's what we want to give you. When you come here, we want you to feel that love. Because we know that when you leave these four walls, you may not feel it. When you go to work, you may feel those spirits warring against you. When you go on the, when you go on the, uh, the, the supermarket, you may feel those, those spirits that are going to and fro, working against you. But when you come in here, we want you to be rejuvenated. Some of these children don't, don't have stable environments. So when they come here, we want them to feel that love. And that, that is a recharge in a sense. But it's very important that we take care of ourselves, that we learn from our mistakes, not be afraid to admit our mistakes. Let me tell you this. If you make a mistake or, or if you have been delivered from sin, it is your duty to share the goodness of the Lord. Because these children are, 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 are going to face the same thing that you've been through. And, and see, something so, so precious like Dr. Webb is sharing is that we wouldn't call overworking a sin. We wouldn't call it a bad thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's good intentions, but it's leading to a bad thing. You have to take care of yourself. He was talking about how... His, you know, he used to struggle because he didn't eat breakfast. And then he talked to his dad and found out, guess what? He wasn't, it wasn't nothing new. This was something his dad did that kind of trickled down to him. And then he was able to share that with, you know, I ain't never had a problem eating. I don't know. I, you know, but, but he had to share it with, with his son so they can help. Knowledge is powerful, but application of knowledge is even more powerful. So I pray that you don't allow these words to fall on deaf ears. We have work to do. We have to examine ourselves. We have to talk to our children and our grandchildren. We don't want these mishaps to be commonplace. We want to learn from them. Just like he, he was sharing, when my niece passed away, I, I want my children. I want, I want God to get the glory out of this. We don't all have to fall to the same fate. If you see a ditch there, you can learn how to walk right around that thing. Or if you know what, this path may not be right. You know what, we might have to just turn all the way around and go the other way. But it all starts with, with this. That's our vision here. That's our mission. Healing minds, 
damage as a result of sin. Yahweh wants to change the way we think. He wants to change us into new people by changing the way we think. I hope that, I hope that analogy helped y'all because some of y'all right now want to charge your phone right now. <laughs> but that's why I thank God for this Sabbath day. It's a day. It, it is not a burden. It is a delight. I look forward to the Sabbath. I don't know about I don't know about my brothers here, but I look forward to the Sabbath because you know what? If I'm I'm so glad that Yahweh with his wisdom, he knew that if he didn't make a day for us to rest, I already know Brother Jerry will be out there working. Deacon Gordon will be out there working. Brother Tim will be out there working. Brother Doug will be out there working. Brother Greg will be out there working. Little little Greg would out, be out there working. And I know I'll be out there working. But God knows that we need rest. And even though we love him, we need to take time to make time to focus on him. So I pray y'all were blessed. I'm going to say a confession. May I repeat after me? Say, Father God, I thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for the openness of our leader, Dr. Webb. Show me me, Lord. Show me where I can rest. Where I can make changes in my daily habits that I can make rest a priority where I can make taking a vacation an annual vacation priority and proper breaks when needed but never taking a break from praying from reading your word from meditating and spending time with you I pray that I will put more focus, more concern, and more attention on my body, on my body's battery, than my cell phone's battery. <laughs> this I pray in the name of your son. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap for his word. Amen. His word is, we've been fed richly today from the word of God and we just praise him we praise him this is our offering and tithing time what time is it it's giving time it's giving time what time is it hallelujah this is a form of worship also where we show God how much we appreciate him with our offerings amen we want to thank our social media family for joining us one more time. We pray that you were blessed. We truly thank God for you. We pray for you each and every day that the Almighty will continue to bless your life and open up your understanding and allow the word to go deep down in your heart so that you can live the word of God out in an applicable way. That someone would see Yeshua in your life and want to know how they can know the same Lord that you know. We pray we pray for you. And, and if you want to send, you want to continue to send your donations to us and support in an effort to help support this ministry and keep this ministry afloat along with the family here, you can send those donations to 436 Eastern Boulevard, Essex, Maryland, 21221. Or you can go online to leveourwebministries.org. Again, we thank you and we appreciate you so much. And we pray God blessings over your life. Have a blessed and wonderful week. Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Hallelujah. We, we just... Um,